I had a guy, I had a guy come to the farm here and um, he wanted to lose some weight. And so I had him, I had him pull his little wheelie suitcase up the mountain, it took like three hours. And he got up to the cabin up there. It's a tiny little cabin. And uh, he couldn't fit in the, in the door because it has a little door. Couldn't get in. We had, to, we had to push him in into the cabin. And I gave him a bushel of apples. And I said, I'll be back next week. And he said, well, where's the shower? Like, what else am I going to eat? I said, you're going to eat apples. By the time you're done with the apples, you'll be able to fit through the door. And um, there is no shower. No shower here. I'll see you next week. Um, what do you do, like you yourself, what do you do to help people become mentally tough? I help people do the things they don't want to do. I get them out of their comfort zone. You know, I do that with employees. I do that with Spartans. I do that with moms, Marines, monks, you name it. People, they get uncomfortable at different things. I'm afraid of sharks. I don't like to swim in the ocean, so I know I have to do that. I got to get out of my comfort zone. And I do that. Some people, uh, they're afraid to talk to others. They got to get out of their comfort zone. They got to talk to other people. Other people, they don't like crowds. They don't like public speaking. Whatever that thing is that, that pulls you into your shell and doesn't allow you to really fully express yourself, you got to do it. You got to practice it. Get out in the rain. You're not going to drown. Get up on stage. Nobody's going to laugh. Do the tough thing. Learn a new language. Make that sales call that you're afraid to make because you might get rejected. Do customer service. You may find out your product sucks. Do the hard things. Mm. Do you have any good stories? Like I know um, you've got some great ones that I heard you talk about on Joe Rogan, but do you have any that you'd like to share with us around when people have come to you? I do it every day. I get people, I get people out of their comfort zone. I had a guy, I had a guy come to the farm here and um, he wanted to lose some weight. And so I had him... I had him pull his little wheelie suitcase up the mountain. It took like three hours. And he got up to the cabin up there. It's a tiny little cabin. And uh, he couldn't fit in the, in the door because it has a little door. Couldn't get in. We had, to, we had to push him in into the cabin. And I gave him a bushel of apples. And I said, I'll be back next week. And he said, well, where's the shower? Like, what else am I going to eat? I said, you're going to eat apples. By the time you're done with the apples, you'll be able to fit through the door. And um, there is no shower. No shower here. I'll see you next week. Got him out of his comfort zone. At the end of 30 days, he lost 100 pounds. 100 wow. pounds. He had no choice. He wanted to start a fire at night. It was cold. He had to find some wood. He had to chop some wood. And so I just, I just make people do things they would otherwise never do. Man, that is so hardcore. <laughs> that is insane. So, so like, how did this guy, like, I've got to delve deeper on this one. Like, how did this guy find you? And like, what was the pitch? Like, like and, and why did you want to take him on? Calls and emails all day, every day. I had, I had a, a um, active military last month show up. Active military. She said, look, I heard about you. I had a baby a year ago. My husband's taking care of the baby. I've never been able to take, I haven't been able to take off the, the, the weight from, that I gained from, from, from giving birth. And I need 30 days of hell on Joe's farm. I, I, need, you to, I need you to help me. I, I'm, I'm not feeling good about myself. I'm, I'm active military. You can't tell anybody I'm here. And I said, I got it. I got the mission. I gave her a task and she, she followed the orders. And at the end of 30 days, I got a handwritten note. She said, I'm back. Thank you. But she wouldn't have done it on her own. She actually had to leave her husband and her baby and come to the farm. I've had billionaires send me their kids that are, that are vaping and doing drugs and they just can't get cleaned up. I bring them here, they look like they're in prison within two days. They don't understand why are they carrying rocks? Why are they mixing cement and, and pushing wheelbarrows? They're billionaires because that's what they need. They gotta get out of their comfort zone. They gotta get back to reality, get grounded. Again, I do it all day long. This is what I do. Yeah, look, that those like that's crazy. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I'm curious as well, like around when it comes to enacting permanent change. Um, what do you think that takes from your perspective? 
Permanent change requires you to be fully committed. You got to buy in. You got to change your story. You got to stand up proud and tell everybody around you, this is who I am. If you're telling everybody you're lazy, if you're telling everybody you can't wake up early, if you're telling everybody you're afraid to make sales calls, that's who you that's who you'll be. So, I like to say whether you think you can or you think you can't, you'll be right. Right? So let's let's change your narrative. You're if you're willing to change your narrative and you're willing to go public with it, we got a chance of making it permanent. Years ago, I put on this race here called the Death Race. And you know, about 300 people are allowed to sign up for this thing and they show up and invariably almost all of them quit. It's too hard. I made a change one year and I said you're only allowed to do the death race if you get an article published in the newspaper saying to all your friends and family in that newspaper that in your town that you're going to do it and you're going to finish. Guess what happened? Finishing rates went up. They changed. The reason they changed was they were held accountable publicly. So unless you're willing to go out there, I'm very careful about the words I choose. If somebody says, "Oh, Joe, uh, do you want to go run the 100 miles? You want to do this? You want to do that? You want to start that business? I'm very careful about saying yes, because if I say yes, I own it. Yeah, the idea of just if you, if you have a goal or think something that you want to do, you're making yourself publicly accountable. You're telling people you don't like because you don't want to feel that shame. And then also, yeah, you're changing your story. Yeah, if you have a goal and you're keeping, keeping it inside you and you have no... Um, partners to hold you accountable, no, ca- no date on the calendar. It, it, it's not even a goal. I don't even know what it is. It's like, it's like throwing a penny in, in, a, in a wishing well and saying maybe, like, it's not, it's not going to come true. You got to go public with it. You got to get that date on the calendar. And you, imagine, imagine if at university they just said, look, do the work. I'll see you at the end of the semester. No one would do anything. But when the professor says it's due on Friday, and your grade is gonna be affected, you actually show up with the paper, you change, you do the work. So essentially you're saying to create the habits of, I guess, um, you know, creating permanent change, you need to start with keeping yourself accountable. What are some other things that you need to do to create permanent change? You gotta do it for a period of time and, and you gotta make it part of your standards. You know, people talk to me about motivation or motivation is bullshit, right? It's about discipline. It's about saying, I wake up every morning at 5.05, whatever time you wake up, and I always sweat before breakfast, and I always take a cold shower, and this is what I do. And then you do it every single day. And by the way, if some days, maybe the shower isn't completely cold, and you're sneaking in a little hot water, and maybe instead of your 300 burpees, you're doing 200, that's okay, as long as you're consistent and you're getting after it every single day and you're close to target. Yep. And when it comes to habits, how long do you have you found from your experience it takes to form them within others? You know, we talk about, you know, the, the standard science is 30 days. I, I, I like 100 days. 100 days really makes permanent change. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Okay. And when it comes to, I guess, uh, you know, becoming mentally tough, what other tips do you have uh, for people? Look, if you want to become mentally tough, you got to surround yourself with people that are tough, right? We are an average of our five best friends. Um, You're going to have to practice, like we talked about, adversity. Uh, Practice a little poverty, a very similar concept. And then you're going to have to treat yourself like an Olympian. You got to eat well. You got to sleep well. You got to train well. Um, you got to do all the things that tough people do. They take care of themselves, right? You wouldn't see an Olympian uh, smoking cigarettes and, and, and doing all the ridiculous things business people do. So you've got to set yourself up for success. So with the, when, when the storm comes, you can withstand the storm. Yeah, you, your mindset is so critical. Like that, like that is most of it. Um, and, you know, we're, we're talking about this stuff, but like, you know, so many people have said to me, you know, like if you want to do something, if you've done it, like let's just say you want to build a, let's just say hypothetically you want to build a, a $10 million a year business. Um, if you truly believe in your mind that you can do it and it's already done, that's half the battle. 
Oh, there's no doubt about it. I, mean, I think they did a study. I believe they did a study where they took basketball players that practice free throw shots uh, physically and then another group that practiced it mentally. And the, and the group that practiced it mentally did just as well as those that practiced it physically. So you got to believe in it. You got you to visualize it. And um, you got to do it. Hey guys, hope you're loving our videos and that you're getting heaps of value from them. If you are, make sure to hit the like button and make sure to subscribe to join the Founder Fam. If you did enjoy this video and want to continue to master your skills, make sure you click here to access your free training now, where we'll go into way more depth with this founder.